Take the conversation forward. Varun Lohachab of HDFC Securities is our next guest. He's the head of institutional research over there. Varun, good to have you on the show. I was just going through your note and, you know, it seems that you have had a bit of a cautious stance even before elections and now, you know, given the, the new reality, uh, that continues. But tell us what you've made of all the things, this huge volatility. And the big debate right now is whether the CapEx tilt is going to shift a bit to rural, to more mass, to more populist. And therefore, if that's the kind of portfolio shift that investors also need to look at. Yeah, hi, good morning. Uh, so, correct, I think the volatility has been very high, but if you look at YTD returns, you know, they are still in that 3-4% zone. So, despite going up, down, you know, markets have been largely flat and, uh, you know, which is what our point was in February when we had written a note that, you know, going forward, uh, you know, next 12 to 18 months, returns are going to be quite muted across all the three indices, which is large, mid and small cap. And we still continue to hold that view. Uh, in light of the elections, uh, I think the only, uh, you know, change that we probably foresee is, you know, some degree of shift in cap in, in, in expenditure towards, you know, the rural or bottom of the pyramid or social schemes, whatever way you want to call it. Because till now in the last three to four years, it was entirely capex and infrastructure heavy. While we believe that will still continue to grow, but one anyway, given the high base, that growth was expected to slow down. And now given this, you know, pushes and pulls of a coalition politics and, you know, government probably uh, would like to revive, uh, you know, uh, sort of demand at the bottom of the pyramid. So there would be some reallocation of resources in our view. Uh, in, with that context, uh, you know, anyway, now, even before the elections, we had increased our weightage on consumer staples after being underweight for four years. Again, combination of two things, the pendulum head swing in terms of valuation on the other extreme where the investment and capex heavy sectors had, uh, you know, very unfavorable risk reward. Uh, and whereas some of the more, uh, you know, uh, the, the staples or, you know, the bottom of the pyramid facing stocks had a better risk reward. So irrespective of election outcome, I think the probability of making money was higher on the other side. And now this event acts at, as a trigger. So I think investors should definitely reallocate a part of their portfolio away from capex and industrials into, uh, you know, consumer staples, maybe some of the large cap IT where valuations are fine. Uh, and actually after four years, first time, you know, it's that we are not seeing value across any of the sector. So till now we were, pay, we were you know, running a portfolio where we had a value and economy facing sectors bias in our model portfolio. But now we believe, uh, you know, we are not seeing any uh, very attractively placed sector. Uh, you know, consumer staples on a relative basis is fine, but on absolute basis, I would not say again that it offers value. So I think it will become more nuanced, more stock specific, sectoral calls will matter less and overall returns will be muted uh, irrespective of the election outcome because the earning growth for FY25 is expected to be in single digit for our coverage universe. So there is a slowdown in earning growth, not because economy is slowing down, but because, you know, the earnings had normalized in FY24 and FY24 was a bumper year of earnings and on that base you will see a muted growth. So uh, I think if one is comfortable with slightly more moderate return expectations on their portfolio, it should be a good year profit. All right. Hi, Varun. Good morning and good to see you. And just to clarify, from your coverage universe, the earnings growth you're working with is high single digit, right? Yeah. So, uh, and, for on, and on the Nifty, it is low double digit. For entire coverage universe uh, of 226 stocks, it's around 6% because it okay. is pulled down by select OMCs and all. But at a nifty level, it would be close to 9 to 10 percent if I have to look at, you know, our stocks, which are part of nifty. OK, all right. Baru, and I wanted your take on the PSU theme. If there has been one flag bearer, it has to be the PSU stocks. The entire basket was available, I think, for 15 lakh crore of market capitalization. Just before the election verdict, you know, it, came, it went to around 75 lakh crore, 76 lakh crore, if I got that number correct. How do you approach this theme? Because some of them have priced in some of that good news. But your approach, are there still pockets that you would like to get in? Or for the time being, you'd like to avoid that pocket because the big money has already been made? I think there is nothing too attractive left in PSU. At the same time, you know, what we have been saying and we have been holding some of them for last four years. You know, we had Gale, we had SBI, we had 
Pargrade, NTPC, Coal India, quite a few of them in our model portfolio, even uh, you know the OMCs and ONGC at some point of time in last four years. But now, you know, I think relative attractiveness of some of them has gone away. So I would not say that some of these names, I think, are still reasonably priced. And that's why we have not exited all of them. We still continue to like SBI. We still continue to like, you know, NTPC and Pargrid. But, you know, the weights have been reducing because now there is no extra value being provided by these you know, if SBI is at 1.5 time price to book and other private sector good quality banks are at 1.8, 1.9, then there is no big uh, sort of a, you know, value left uh, adjusting for the ROA. So, they is still reasonably priced. I would not say that large, all PSUs are overpriced and, you know, one should completely exit. But some of the pure momentum ones where, which are not backed by earnings and where there is too much euphoria and retail action, those should definitely be avoided. I think the, the kind of PSU rally we had 12, 18 months, we believe that will probably come to an end. It, there, it would again become more nuanced, more stock specific rather than a broad PSU theme. Mm. Okay, all right. Uh, what about this fear that, you know, the balance between capex as well as populism? How do you expect, uh, you know, the newly formed government to navigate between that? Because some on the street believe that maybe capex takes a bit of a backseat and there'll be some populist measures. Uh, the other part says that, well, even the allies are growth oriented. So that's unlikely to happen. How you view this? So, uh, so I think there are two, three things. One, uh, being populist uh, doesn't mean that you are not growth oriented. Uh, so I think the way we see the budget to be presented, one, there won't be a complete 180 degree shift away from infra to you know, just giving money in the hands of the bottom of the pyramid. I don't think uh, the government would do that. They would still continue to increase spends on infrastructure and capex. But at the same time, you know, they will reallocate some allocation to higher allocation towards social schemes compared to what we have done in the last few years. Plus, they might come up with some new flagship schemes to revive, uh, you know, bottom of the pyramid from a three to five year perspective. So I don't think anything knee-jerk and short-term will be done by the government just to kind of uh, like, you know, uh, spur immediate demand at the bottom of the pyramid. The good part is the fiscal position is strong. The, the tax buoyancy is good. And in that context, I think another view which we have is, uh, which where the fear is that probably uh, government may not follow the fiscal glide path. We have written very clearly in our note. We expect that government will not deviate away from the fiscal glide path, which means overall they will remain fiscally prudent. And the good thing is they have some headroom given good tax buoyancy to reallocate say one to two lakh crore from extra money which they would have probably spent on capex, uh, you know, before this election now probably to reallocate to more, uh, you know, social schemes and bottom of the pyramid. But again, it may be more structural with a three to five year view. There might be some new schemes coming up, which is something to be looked out for. Mm, okay, Varun, uh, let's see. I think the next couple of days will be very interesting because we'll have more clarity on some of these aspects as we get closer to the budget. But thank you very much for joining in. Really appreciate you being with us on the show today.